So thank you for joining another episode of the Financial Literacy Network podcast. I'm Bob Stammers, and I help lead the FLN, which is organized to provide advice, resources, and support to CFA societies around the world interested in financial literacy and investor education and in the supporting and with supporting like-minded organizations that need additional resources to help manage their program. So today we have a special guest from the Emerald Isle, um, Niall McDonald, who is the current president of CFA Society Ireland is with us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Afternoon, Bob. Delighted to be here. All right. So in addition to learning about the Financial Literacy Initiative at CFA Society Ireland, I want to discuss how you work to publish a resource named Money Matters that you use in Ireland, and that may be a framework for other groups that would like to do something similar. So to start off, can you give us um, a short summary of the book Money Matters that you put together and tell us what the impetus for putting that together was? Yeah, sure thing, Bob. Well, like a lot of other societies, uh, we're very passionate about financial literacy in the CFA Society Ireland. Um, the reasons, similar to challenges that are prevalent throughout other countries, um, you know, research shows that financial literacy among adults in Ireland is low, similar to the global uh, theme. Also recognise that financial literacy is fundamental to our well-being as a society. So CFA Society Ireland, we are actively seeking uh, a project in the area of education and considering a lot of options. And we had a lucky break. Um, we were approached by a local author, Susan Hayes Cullerton, to develop a book for secondary or, as you'd say, high school students. Um, I must say that my predecessor, Noel Friel, who was the f president of CFA Society Ireland at the time, was really the uh, driver behind the initiative. And he continues to lead on the project. So we developed a textbook mainly aimed at 15 to 16 year olds. Um, it was designed to help them become more comfortable with personal finance, um, enterprising and investing. Um, I'm really looking for a springboard for students to navigate today and tomorrow's financial decisions. Um, it includes digital resources and active learning, and it's organized under three strands, personal finance, investing and enterprise. So that's things like areas about what is a pension, um, understanding time value of money in, a, in as you know simplistic a, 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 as a, a format as possible. And the chapters were, were developed and written um, in collaboration with the CFA Society of Ireland. Yeah, I really like the book and I'll tell you why. I mean, I see a lot of financial literacy books and they do the basics and then they stop people at budgeting or something like that. And, what I really like about yours is it keeps taking people on that journey, right? I mean, once you learn enough about managing money, it's about time to start learning about, you know, putting your money to work for you, you know, to create wealth, which I think is great. So um, is there any kind of mandate for financial literacy in Ireland at all? I mean, do kids have to take any financial literacy or is it now all kind of external organizations like yourself that are, um, you know, um, doing the work? Yeah, great question. And no, there is no um, mandate as such or like, um, you know, for students to take finance or even business or even financial literacy. I think we've targeted this at a, a key point, we would feel, in the high school um in, in the high school period where you have a, um, a transition year, we call it over here, where you explore other subjects. So that's where the 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 book is targeted at and then you take for your final levels you have the option to either you can take business or economics as such but it, it's very much a choice and you could have secondary school students that might not take any um, business or finance subjects uh, for their high school diploma so so how are you using the book how are you getting it to students since there's no mandate <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> for us, this is really a starting point. You know, it's an introduction for financial literacy to teenagers. Um, now, we are looking to build on the initiative and expand to include podcasts, video and communications on financial education. Um, but what we do is we're engaging directly with the teachers. So we've sent out books to various uh, to, to schools. We've offered to come in and do workshops. And it really is just trying to get the message out there about, you know, getting in front of the teachers about a, a, a book that they can showcase and use um, in that transition year period to introduce finance, um, promote financial literacy. And then, you know, well, what we'd like to see is like, you know, help 
develop that financial education, um, but also you know help develop the next generation of uh, investment professionals. So I ask you, I mean, you know, one of the things about financial literacy that's a little complicated is that finance is slightly different in every country. Not you know that the mechanics are the same, but a lot of the rules are different. Find that the case between Ireland and some of the other European countries or in the US. Um, so, sorry, Bob, I don't really get the question. <laughs> oh, I was just saying what you thought. I mean, one of the challenges with financial literacy is that, you know, the, even though the mechanics of saving, budgeting are all the same, the rules, the financial rules would be different. And I was just wondering how different they might be in Ireland compared to, you know, other countries. Yeah, well, I think we're taking the approach of avoiding the kind of, um, you know, the granular detail and like, you know, let's say tax, et cetera, which is very pertinent to pensions. And really focus on the basic concepts, which, you know, that's ubiquitous throughout the globe in terms of get your principles right. Um, what is a pension? What is a stock? Uh, what is a mutual fund? What is an ETF, et cetera? Um, and really get those, get the, the, that um, financial education on some financial markets and the basics right, um, and then take it from there. Yeah, so that, this, was, this was a long way around question, sorry. Um, basically what I was getting to. So other so other societies, other organizations could use your book, at least the, the information in your book um, for populations outside of Ireland, you think? Yeah, I think that's I think that that's that, that's correct. And, you know, we've had we've had a lot of engagement from, um, from other societies, but potentially using it in different regions. And um, what we did include within the book is um, what which is most certainly pertinent to the um, our region was, you know, career, um, career spotlights. So various society members and you know what they do, um, and, and introducing various careers in 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 financial services. But that can be tailored to you know depending for the, for a local region. Yeah, that's great. So, what are your long term goals and objectives for the book and the and the initiative? And um, you know, how do you keep playing on using the book going forward? Yeah, great question. I'd say really three points. One, build students' interest in financial topics and encourage them to consider a career in uh, finance as an option. Um, two, I'd say encourage students to consider business subjects in their final cycle in second, secondary level education. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's an option um, to take you know, finance or, or business subjects in your, for, for your end of high school exams. And then three, we want to do this in the most inclusive way. So I always think that, you know, there is a gender disparity in our industry um, and it's trying to encourage early at like at a grassroots level for more female participation um, in, in, in finance um, and also, you know, um, disadvantaged areas as well. You know, getting show them showcase, you know, careers in finance and it is a viable option for people. Yeah. So what do you think the most significant challenges that you have in creating this initiative and what would you say to other organizations? What should they consider if they want to do something similar? Yeah, I'd say one, start early and don't underestimate the work involved. Um, see, get a support group together um, from your volunteers. Um, so, you know, the, the editing phase of, of the book was particularly onerous. So we had to get a, a, like a, a large swathe of people involved from across our board and volunteers and everyone, given, you know, how, you know, how important this is and, you know, how passionate we are about financial education and literacy and our, and our role in, um, in society to promote it. You know, we had, a, we were inundated with support which, across the society, which was great. I'd say, <clears throat> uh, thirdly, um, the legal agreement, know where you stand on copyright and ownership of the materials and uh, the IP. Um, and we were, as a, lastly, we were lucky to collaborate with an experienced or, uh, author and Susan was fantastic because she developed previous tech books and she understands the curriculum requirements. So getting an, um, an understanding of what the educational board or and what they require for uh, in the curriculum side of things is, is very important. So um, what do you think the most important things you've learned about creating and managing your financial literacy program you think might be interested in other CFA societies? I'd say don't try to do it all. Um, maybe start with one project um, and build it from there. And that's what we intend on doing. All right. Um, 
So for our last question, um, where can people get more information on, on your book, how you're using it, and how can you know CFA societies that are interested get a hold of you? Yeah, sure. There's a section on the CFA Society Ireland website, uh, specifically on the book. And we're happy to send speak to any society volunteers on our experiences or information, and you know, ultimately sh share how we went about it. And um, also, you know, we've sent out um, uh, by request you know, copies of the book to any society volunteer that wants to review it and take a look and see how they can transfer it to the local market. You know, we have have done that. We've had calls, uh, requests from so far away as Uruguay for a copy of the book for a read and a reference. Um, and numerous other societies have engaged with us. So it's, been, it's fantastic to see that response. Yeah, that's great. All right. So unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Uh, Niall, thank you so much for joining us and giving us some of your interest, insights into your new book and collaboration on your financial literacy um, initiative. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks, Bob. This has been great. It's been a pleasure. So for you that are listening, there are several ways to get involved with the FLN and get information about other programs and best practices in creating and managing them. Uh, the FLN has a LinkedIn group and a website found at financialliteracynetwork.org. And you're already taking advantage of the, the YouTube channel. So thank you very much for joining us.